In this video, let's have a look on how we can apply blend modes in DaVinci Resolve, similar to what we usually do in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. To show you what I mean, here I have an image and I can quickly duplicate it by pressing Command J. On the duplicate we just created, I can change the blend mode to soft light, which immediately creates this nice contrasty warm image. Notice the difference when I turn this on and off. The effect is a bit too strong, but with the help of opacity we can dim this down. Pretty awesome. Let's now switch to DaVinci Resolve and see how we can apply the same effect to a video clip. I am in the edit page and have the video clip of which I use a screenshot in Affinity Photo. Now, there are two ways of applying the same effect as in photo using blend modes. Let me start with the first one, which is very similar to photo or Photoshop. We duplicate the current clip by holding the Alt or Option key and then drag the clip to the layer above. This will create a duplicate of the clip. We can then change the blend mode of this clip, just like in photo or Photoshop, by using the inspector panel. If the inspector panel is not enabled, make sure it is enabled using the inspector button on the top right. With the duplicated video selected, we can scroll down to the composite section. In DaVinci Resolve, the blend mode is called the composite mode and just like in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, we can select a blend mode. Let's select soft light and we have achieved the same. Pretty cool. The clip is now applied to itself in soft light blend mode, just like in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. We also have the opacity slider to dim down the effect. Awesome! While this works, I would not suggest using this method. My advice would be to use the color tab in Resolve for color grading. Before moving to the color tab, let's remove this duplicate. Make sure to use the Delete Selected and not the Ripple Delete as this would also delete the original clip. So in the Color tab, we can achieve the same fairly easy. First, we add a Serial Note by pressing the Alt or Option S, followed by adding a Parallel Note by pressing Alt or Option P. When the Parallel Note was added, a Parallel Mixer was also added which basically brings the output of the nodes together. Our two nodes we created will need to act as layers so we can blend them to each other, or in Resolve terminology, composite them. To have the two nodes act as layers, we need to change the parallel mixer to a layer mixer. To do that, we can right click on the parallel mixer and select Morph into Layer Mix Mode. Now that we have a layer mixer, we can right click again on the mixer node and change the composite mode to soft light. And there we have the same effect, pretty awesome. By the way, you could also use a custom mixer node, but that is for another video. To see the before and the after, I can disable the lower node by clicking on the number at the bottom left or make sure it's selected and press Ctrl or Command D to toggle it on and off. Now the effect is way too strong, so we want to dim it and we need something like Opacity. You can look around, but I don't think you would find a slider called Opacity here. To control its strength or the Opacity, we need to use the key function of a node. You can compare the key with the mask in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Let's make sure our node is selected and then press the key icon in the middle of the screen. As mentioned, this acts like a built-in mask in Photoshop. To make the clip more transparent, we can darken the mask, which is controlled by the key output value. I can hold and drag on the number to control the value, and if I lower it, notice how the white moves to grey, which increases the output transparency or in other words, lowers the opacity of the node. Pretty cool. Here's a quick tip for you. The preview by default will show the final output. If you want to see the output of the selected node, 
you can use the Shift H command key to toggle between the selected node or the final output. So when I press Shift H, our selected node will be previewed. Notice the effect of lowering the key output. Let's see the before and the after by pressing Command D to toggle this node. Pretty cool. Here is another tip for you. If you have a complex node structure and want to see the before and the after, you can use the Alt or Option D shortcut to toggle all nodes on and off. Just like in Affinity Photo or Photoshop, before the image is blended, we can apply adjustments to it. We can do the same here in Resolve. Let me set the key output back to 1. I can switch to the Curve section and modify the curve of the clip before it gets blended in with soft light. Just like in Photoshop, we quickly created a nice coloring effect by adjusting the curves. As you also notice, you can also modify the RGB channel curves fairly easy to get an amazing look. A quick look on the before and the after. Pretty awesome how quickly we color graded this clip using our photoshopping skills. Let me dim it by using the key output value as mentioned earlier and that looks pretty good to me. Before leaving you, here is another quick tip for you. As you know, I love blend ranges in Affinity Photo, which is also known in Photoshop as Blend If. Let me quickly share a workaround to apply a blend range. We are going to make use of a luminosity mask for this. To create a luminosity mask, I need a node in front of our node where we apply the curves adjustment. I can right click on the node and select Add Serial Before. This node will act as a mask before we make the curve changes. To have this node act as a luminosity mask, we need to apply a qualifier in Resolve. Let me enable the qualifier screen by pressing the color dropper icon. It opens up the HSL qualifier and I can now select the range in the luminosity section by moving the controllers on the range or use the input values below. As you can see, I have now selected the highlights in the clip. Let me toggle the node preview. As you can see, the node with the curves adjustment is not being modified. We still see the whole clip. If we go to the node with the luminance mask, we can indeed see that only the highlights are shown. To make sure the mask is being applied to the next node, we also need to connect the blue control points. Notice now how the node with the curves has been updated and the curves adjustment is applied to the same output. Awesome! I can now go to the Luminance Mask node and adjust the range to my liking. Pretty cool! I can temporarily disconnect the node to see the before and link it back to see the after. The Vinci Resolve can be a little bit overwhelming, but a lot of techniques used in Photoshop can be applied fairly easy where you know your way around. The extra dimension of time in video can sometimes make things challenging. Thank you for watching and here are some shortcuts used during this video. Until the next video.